This is a Distillery Channel Network production bringing you the distillerychannel.com. Good morning, boss. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pass the peanuts. Sorry, boss. Uh, mm, we have a shoot at 30. Uh, it's tough down here in the low country. 15, 10. Oh, all right. Okay. Five. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Distilleries of the World. I'm America's number one wino, Michael Stewart, and joined <laughs> to my right by our brewery expert, Timothy Bona. Yeah, my grandfather was a bartender on the south side of Chicago, so here I am. There you go. And, of course, uh, Randy Weckerly is the owner of the Distillery Channel, and he is our... Uh, our special guest this week. I guess I am, but uh, thank you guys for having me on my own show. I really appreciate that. <laughs> He's also the owner of the Distillery Show. There you go. But so, I am right. still trying to find a job. There you go. Uh, I, I know. know you're always trying to find a job somewhere. Hey, but you got a great job now. I do. Tell us about how the Distilleries of the World show came about. Well, that is uh, specific knowledge that I gained through uh, my brother was uh, looking and putting up, which he did a distillery in Baraboo, Wisconsin. And uh, so having breakfast with him several times, I learned a little bit about distilleries. Looking for some sponsors for our other great show called Where to Play Golf. I told my sales guy, Mm -hmm. call up some distilleries. They might want to do something with us. He came back three days later as we were going down to do Where to Play Golf Eco Style. Right. uh, Golden Trail, Golden Isle. And he said, I got 90 of them. (laughs) <laughs> I said, well, all right. Yeah, I said, uh, maybe we should do something with that. I think mm-hmm. I'll do something. So I started the distillerychannel.com, immediately pulled off the road, and I looked at different dot coms, and, and uh, it's been good from there. And the rest is history. Yeah, sort of what happened was is that it's the fastest growing industry in America in terms of small craft distilling. Uh, as we got to know more of it and get involved with uh, different uh, traveling the country, we went down to some festivals in Florida. Right. They loved what we were trying to do. And I was like, then we got invited to the American Craft Spirits Association in uh, Chicago in March. And they said, could you come to a PR luncheon? So we did. Sounds like rough work, Randy. Yeah. yeah. Well, somebody has yeah. to do this, yes, Tim. I and, know. You, know I, you guys are invited to well, this. Well, this show's you know? going to be on every week, and yeah. I'll tell you what, there are more festivals than we can even cover every week yeah, around exactly. the world. <laughs> exactly. Every, I mean, the, the, and, this is the world's, yeah. I call it the world's lifelong pastime. It is. And, and I'm, is, reading uh, here, I'm reading yeah. here from the exact des- definition of distil- distillation. Distillation? Here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's the ex- extraction of essential meaning and the important aspects of something. This week it's Wisconsin, <laughs> but uh, what what else could that something be, Randy? My soul. Yes, <laughs> we're going to extract <laughs> and purify your soul. That would be a big show. project, a big big. All three of us would cause <laughs> I don't know something to go, but yeah, we're going to. And what happened was we went in and then they asked us. They said, "Could you be like the platform for the American Craft Spirits Association?" Right. right. I said, "Really." Sure, whatever that meant. <laughs> so I said, and I came back and talked to you guys. I said. I think we should try to do a show. So here we are. The so the distillerychannel.com right. is going to be literally the voice worldwide of the uh, distillery, uh, you know, wineries, breweries, yeah. industry. That's what happened. We kept, I, I was just, I, every time I turned around, I said, is this really right? You know? <laughs> and I have uh, participated in meetings where the president of the American Craft Distiller Association said, yes, this is what we'd like you to have you do. We work with the PR people out of New York. Right. And uh, they've just been great. And they said, so we started the trails, and okay. so we got the distillery. Tell us about the trails. The trails are cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what we do is we provide the opportunity for people to say, well, they, people like to travel. Right. That's why we're doing the Wisconsin feature. They want to go out and move around and see whatever, but there was no place to go except guilds they had. And we said, well, we want to help support the industry, and we want to help through free advertising, and they can be join our trails, and they we can really support them with our social media and our outgoing of our shows and advertising and our podcasts and websites. So Everything. Yeah. So we're going to do it all, and we're going to feature yeah. all the wineries, breweries, and distilleries of the world. We're going yeah. to make something special. <laughs> we, that's what we're doing. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go forward, and uh, we're going to begin to do it right now on all right. our show. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, our first up, we're heading off to Wisconsin. On Wisconsin, baby. On Wisconsin. There all you right. go. It's all be right. Fun. We'll be up next on Distilleries of the World.
This is a Distillery Channel Network production bringing you the distillerychannel.com. Welcome to another edition of Distilleries of the World. I'm America's number one wino, Michael Stewart. <laughs> Joined to my right by our, our uh, brewery master, uh, Timothy Bona. That makes me a cheese hat, I there guess. There you go. And, of course, uh, Randy Weckerly, who is the uh, owner and, uh, and founder of the distillerychannel.com. There yeah. you go. Yeah, hey, guys. Great to have you guys. We are live from the shores of Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And, of course, our uh, show is... Uh, is the Badger State this week? It's uh, Wisconsin Mystic. We're going to feature the Mystic Lodge in uh, Hayward, Wisconsin. This is where yeah. we talk about America's lifelong pastime, and we want to remind you about our latest radio shows, TV shows, articles, blogs, specials. You want to go to uh, uh, distillerychannel.com the distillerychannel.com and get all that. What do you do with uh, uh, Facebook and Twitter? Well, before you do go to distillerychannel.com to plug into all that multi social media, we encourage you to fill your glass. And prepare to plunge your thoughts merrily, because we're happy on this show. Aren't there we? you go. Well, again, our featured destination, we're uh, featuring the Badger State, Wisconsin. Uh, and, of course, we're going to feature the Mystic Lodge, uh, Moose Lodge in Hayward, Wisconsin. Oh, We've got yeah. our winery of the week, the Mead Winery in Iron River, Michigan. I mean, Iron River, Wisconsin, in uh, northern, just South of uh, Lake Superior. The, uh, yeah, Lake Superior. Uh, we've got a celebrity chef coming in, uh, Delta Diner in yeah, uh, Delta, classic. Wisconsin. We've got our brewery of the week, the Deep Water Grill in Ashland, Wisconsin, which is just uh, east of Superior. And we've got the tasting room and booze news. Timmy, what well, yes, we got we booze do. news? Well, we have a special guest, Brandy. Bring him in for booze news. Well, we have coming in, and you're going to hear some music coming in here in a minute, but Paul Sletko, he's the American Craft Spirits. Association president. Yes. Ooh. I think so. Hello, Paul. Are you there? Yeah, hey, Joan. How y'all doing today? Uh, Whoa. Well, you're there. getting your own entry music, Paul. <laughs> this is all about booze news. Well, I'm sure I'm very important. You, well, really cool. well, we know what booze, you know, we got we to gotta set the stage here. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Little Frank Sinatra set the stage. And it, yeah, you know, people, when they go out for little craft spirits, there's always, you know, Sinatra has his own deal. So it's all good. Anyway, Paul, thank you for stopping by. And uh, with Michael and Tim here, they're very interested in uh, hearing about the um, work that you do to support uh, the industry. And, and tell us a little bit about what uh, what it's all about, Paul, what, what you're doing and how important that is to the distilleries of America. Well, you know, as the president of the American Craft Spirits Association, I'm really proud to represent all of the craft stores across the country. Uh, you know, the uh, ACSA is the only uh, nonprofit trade association dedicated to craft spirits across the country. Um, you know, we're actually uh, run by distillers for distillers. Um, all of our members are actual distillers. Everybody has a DSP. Um, you know, so our members are people who are taking the business seriously. Uh, working very hard to bring uh, you and the rest of the drinking public uh, not only the finest quality craft spirits, but to do it in a nice, uh, responsible, ethical way. Um, you know, I'm really proud to be able to speak on behalf of all these people because you know I am one of them. Uh, it's really it's a it's a very distinct honor to be able to speak on behalf of it, uh, given that I was actually elected to the position by my peers, which is kind of cool. And that just happened down in March downtown, right down at the Palmer House. Was that the the time of the year that that happened? And at that event, yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, so I, the actual election took place shortly thereafter that. But during that uh, during that conference, when we had the first meeting and people got a chance to talk to the candidates for the board, um, you know, it's it's all of us. You know, we just you know all of us are in this together. We all work together to um, you know make everybody better. The actual mission of the APSA is to uh, elevate and educate uh, everybody about the joy of craft spirits. And we're very proud of what we do. And uh, that's kind of our mission to make sure everybody in the world knows about it, too, you know? And that DSP that people get, tell people to find that, because a lot of the you know people that aren't in the industry, that, that's a pretty meaningful, uh, pretty meaningful three letters in their world. Yeah, so I, mean, I think it's a really interesting thing. It's pretty good. Craft is typically realistically going to be defined by the drinker. So our mission as the ACSA is to make sure that uh, all of our members 
uh, and ideally the whole industry to approach it uh, ethically. Um, you know, because people have the right to define what is craft to them, they also have the right to know uh, the truth about what you know they are purchasing, what they are consuming. Uh, there's an awful lot of smoke and mirrors in the in the spirits business. And so our members are work very hard to remove a lot of that, and uh, we try to make sure that we market ourselves ethically, and you know we say what we are and we are what we say. So the folks that are out there that are growing their own grain and doing everything themselves uh, are telling the truth about it. The people that are going out and buying their grain and doing everything else themselves um, are open and honest about it. And the folks that are going out and buying GNS uh, and sourcing uh, ethyl alcohol from mud to silly and making that into gin. Uh, open and honest about it. Uh, yeah, people are very smart now, but uh, it's hard to be smart when you're being lied to. Yeah, um, Paul, it's Tim. We promise to enjoy responsibly if you also continue to promote uh, wisely and uh, with uh, creativity. Uh, uh, just the great things you're doing. Yeah, that's uh, certainly. We want everybody to consume responsibly. We don't want anybody consuming irresponsibly. You know, we don't market ourselves to children. I know you don't either. Um, you know, these are all things that we're all very proud of. And uh, we take very seriously. And, you know, it's like I said, it's a real honor to be able to talk on behalf of uh, all these people that are not only my peers, but also my friends. Uh, yeah, I think that's the ultimate vote of confidence in the friend most for you. One of the things, Paul, we've got a few minutes here, just in the last couple of minutes. Tell us about your uh, distillery, where it is or it's located, special things you have going on there. Yeah, yeah we're doing some really cool stuff. So I, uh, I own and represent a few spirits. Uh, we are a craft distillery in Evanston, Illinois. Uh, we're located just right outside Chicago. Uh, we make everything ourselves, all the way from grain to glass. Uh, we mash, we ferment, we distill, uh, we age, we bottle. You know, we, we do all of it the right way. We invite everybody to come check us out. Uh, we offer tours. You can kind of see what we're doing. You can smell what we're doing. You know, honestly, frankly, you can taste what we're doing as well. Uh, we are available across the great state of Wisconsin as well as Illinois and 23 other states. Um, and so we certainly invite you to uh, come check it out. Um, yeah. You know, right now I'm getting ready to go do a bottle signing at an alchemy bottle shop in Oakland, Illinois. <laughs> Oakland, California. Tough work. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Evanston, uh, that's yeah, Wildcat right country. Yeah. yeah. It's Wildcat country. we got some good games going up this year. Although I will confess that I... Uh, I have some allegiance to a different Big Ten team. <laughs> hey, Paul, we got that's Michael. We got about thirty seconds left. Uh, tell us uh, what industry shows are going on, and ones that are industry, and ones that the public can uh, can go go to around the country. Oh, absolutely! We just missed the Indie Expo last night, which was in Chicago, and a fantastic show. Uh, always watch out for the Indie Expo. Uh, they have them in New York, Chicago, uh, Vegas. Uh, they're they're all over the country. So watch for the Indie Expo. Uh, I'll be pouring at the Whiskey Fest tomorrow night in San Francisco. Uh, and also watch out for the tasting events put on by uh, the ACSA. There's the one coming up in Nashville in February. And out in Colorado, I believe it's tomorrow night, is a fantastic event. Uh, one of my personal favorites called Deep Still in Denver. Uh, if you have an opportunity to get out to Deep Still, uh, do not miss that. All right, and what's your website for the American Craft Spirits Association? AmericanCraftSpirits.com. Uh, dot com. All right. Thanks, Paul. Uh, thanks, guys. Have a great day. Cheers. Thanks, Paul. That's Paul Soletgo from the American Craft Spirits Association, and we'll be back with more on the distilleries of the world. Thanks, guys. Hello, and greetings from the Delta Diner. You know, some restaurants like to brag about how many McPeople they McServe. And at the Delta Diner, I guess we're not above that either. Since we faithfully rebuilt our original 1940 Silk City Diner a few years back, we've served dozens, dozens of dozens. And not to brag, but we would have served even more if not for the fact that we're out here an hour away from most folks. But then our customers consider the drive and the long wait once they get here well worth it which tells you more about our food than any adjectives I could come up with. Plus, how much quality family time can you get at those dime a dozen places where the longest part of your drive is from the order speaker to the pickup window? And don't miss Burger Mondays, the only day we serve burgers. You can find out more about our weekly burger options by visiting our Facebook page, if that's your kind of thing. 
Delta Diner on County H and Delta, in the middle of nowhere and like nowhere you've ever eaten. Welcome back to the Distilleries of the World show. We are live from the shores of Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And Wisconsin is our featured destination. We are heading up north. Yeah, we're going to a magical place, Michael, where uh, they say your vacation memories are made, new friends are found, and time stands still. Our featured destination is brought to you by the Distillery Channel. Sign up today for free advertising newsletters at thedistillerychannel.com. That's thedistillerychannel.com. And they have a 143-foot muskie. 143 feet. 143 foot. Oh, that's right. I've been there. World's largest. I've been there. It's made of fiberglass, but who cares? Well, well, take us there, Timmy. (laughs) I'll let Randy bring him in. Well, yeah, that that that's a nice size muskie. It is a good size muskie. You guys ever seen a big muskie? Uh, yes, I mean a big one rolling over. Yeah. Is, is, I couldn't talk when I saw my yeah, first that's, one. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we're going to go up there right now to Hayward, right. and hey. we're going to Musky Capital of the World. Musky Capital of the World. We're going to a place called Mystic Moose Lodge in Hayward, Wisconsin. We're going to have Jim Ownerheim, uh, owner, and Kevin Bushnick, who is the founder of the Youth Conservation Alliance of Illinois. Jim and Kevin, how you doing? Fantastic. How are you doing this evening? Now that we're talking to you, we're doing spectacular. We can't wait to hear about the Mystic Moose Lodge and everything that brings in. Tim has been uh, uh, very much uh, enamored by some of the things you have going on there. And uh, when you have kids, you have a bunch of kids up there this weekend, don't you? It's all about the future. Get them unplugged. What are you doing to get them unplugged? Well, uh, one thing that uh, we try to promote is, of course, uh, fishing among the uh, young kids uh, of this uh, country of ours because uh, that's the future of fishing is uh, these young children once uh, you know these older people kind of turn over people like myself which i'm uh, pushing our, my late 60s uh, you know uh, somebody's got to step up to the plate and uh, these young kids we want to keep them interested in the outdoors get them uh, interested in nature of course and um, and fishing and, and of course this weekend we're focusing on musky fishing uh, with the youth conservation alliance one of the things up there with the kids in, in the Hayward area, there's tons of things to do. What What's a typical day like for the kids when they come up to do that? How What what do they do and what do they experience when they're there? Well, with this event uh, that we're focusing on, uh, we have kids from uh, all over the Midwest that are uh, invited to this event. And uh, basically it doesn't really cost the kids anything. It's uh, in this uh, case this year, uh, Muskies, Inc. and the Youth Conservation Alliance uh, pretty much picks up the, the bill, bill on this including meals, lodging, and everything. We have uh, these kids, um, you know, which are uh, out in the water. Of course, we're going to try to, of course, uh, get uh, each child a, a muskie uh, in the boat, if all possible. Last year we had, uh, I think it was about 60, a little over 60 uh, kids that were in uh, in camp for three days fishing, and uh, there were 68 muskies caught. In wow. Wow. wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> what, what's the biggest one the kids have caught? Uh, the biggest, this is Kevin, uh, the biggest is 46 inches, so we've measured this now for the past uh, eight years. We started doing this in 2009 with six kids, and now we're, as Jim said, we're up over 60 kids. So wow. generally the range is 38 to 44 inches with an occasional, you know, something bigger than that. But this lake is known for a high population of muskies. It's a smaller body of water, so there's more fish. Uh, the DNR estimates one per acre, so 
very high population, which is good for uh, getting these kids, in most cases, their first muskie. Well, that's got to be quite an experience. So do you provide the equipment then for the kids? Because it's a little bit different specialized equipment and lures and lines. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Um, we actually have about 20. Per- the reason we catch so many fish, I'll let you in on a little secret here. I stack the deck a little bit with probably 20 of the best muskie fishermen in the north central U.S. <laughs> well, I like that. <laughs> I, I miss it. Uh, so um, we have a lot of the local area guides and then some guides that come in from uh, northern Illinois, uh, but we, some of them have their own equipment. Some of the kids, believe it or not, uh, their families, I mean, this is a big thing for them. This is a, a focus of theirs, fishing. So some of the kids will come in with their own equipment. And one of the reasons that we do is because it almost becomes a research project with the family, right? It's not just a worm and bobber. Uh, you got to put some thought into this one to go out and catch one of these fish. I know you hear stories about, you know, uh, people catching them by accident, bluegill fish, and that doesn't normally happen. So uh, <laughs> a lot of time goes into it, and we spend a lot of time preparing and educating the kids for this event. Yeah, and you're housing up to those modern Northwoods cabins. I mean, not just the kids, the families are really in for a treat when they come north. Well, we uh, we try to put them up, uh, you know, in very good accommodations. Of course, uh, like at our place here at Mystic Moose, uh, you know, it's a, it's a smaller mom-and-pop type type resort. Than by, um, when I uh, actually retired from my, my first job, uh, I guess you may say I was fire marshal for the city of Eau Claire for, uh, you know, many years. I got actually 40 years in uh, the fire service and emergency medicine. Uh, we bought this uh, resort two years before I retired. We've had it 14 years now and uh, uh, did a lot of rebuilding and, uh, you know, new cabins. Uh, the facilities, uh, hopefully, um, we feel are top notch, and of course, where we house these uh, these families with their uh, with their kids, because uh, we do want to make it a family event. We want a mother, a dad, a grandparent. Um, you know, each child's got to have a chaperone, got to have a family member with them. But um, there's some of them that bring their entire families, and uh, so it's uh, it's good to uh, pull these families together and uh, and to get them out on the water and. Um, we try to tell the kids to leave the electronics at home, but um, you know all the toys and everything. We want you to focus on just the outdoors and um, pretty much learning as much as you can, um, you know, about the outdoors. And of course, Kevin can get into um, to this also because we have a biologist uh, out of uh, one of the universities down in Illinois that uh, it works with the kids with these kids also, trying to teach them something. It's not just learning a little how to catch a fish. There's a lot more to it than that. Well, it's a big eco-minded experience, and it's all about water and um, uh, con- you know conservation and conserving and and doing what we can you know to make it a better experience as kids go forward. What did, when, what time of the day does their day start? So we generally start uh, around seven in the morning, and we have a, a big breakfast. Uh, we usually have it arranged. Some people like to sleep in, stay out later. Everybody's different. So we start early and we uh, end late in some cases, depending on the weather. But, um, you know, it's uh, again, it's, we've been doing this since 2009, and uh, the days are full and everybody's tired. I, I've personally not heard one person complain. Uh, <laughs> it, thousands of people that, that we've had come up here for this event, not one complaint. And we've done this in 21 degrees and 75 degrees. doesn't matter. They love it. They're out there. They're fishing. They're with their family. No complaints. Well, we're with Jim Ownerheim of the Mystic Moose Lodge and Kevin Bushnick. And, and Jim, up there, you're also very important in the Hayward City and things that are going on there and promoting Hayward. Tell us a little bit about that because Hayward's, you know, it's it's the destination in the north as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Uh, I'm actually a past president and uh, now a vice president of the Hayward Lakes Visitor Convention Bureau and uh, spent a lot of time in uh, marketing uh, this area do a lot of sports shows i'm down in the chicago area you know doing shows there milwaukee uh journal technical sports show minneapolis lacrosse uh again promoting hayward because uh this is a world-class destination place uh you know we got the world uh lumberjack championships up here we have the american berkey biner ski race which is the largest cross-country ski race in north america in uh, later february so i mean um, we have world-class events going on all the time constantly there's always something that that we want to promote and try to bring people of course to this area if i remember correctly there's a great uh fly fishing store in hayward that uh yes there is uh definitely Uh, in fact uh, i was just looking at a picture 
one of our uh, young residents on Moose Lake, uh, the lake that uh, Mystic Moose Resort is, uh, is located in, our event is located at. Little Kyle, when he was 15 years old, which was um, about a year, year and a half ago, or one year ago this spring, with a fly rod, caught a 52-inch muskie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Of course. Of course he did. <laughs> fly. I tell you, little Kyle, uh, he was kind of by himself in his little 14-foot boat that he has, and uh, uh, this young man, I tell you, took and, well, I, I hate to say this, but he kind of... Uh, put a stringer through the bottom of the, of the jaw on this muskie and dragged him. Well, I wanted to keep him in the water to keep him alive. Dragged him to his dock, hollered to his brother to come down with the camera, which he did. Picked the fish out of the water for about probably um, 30 seconds to a minute. Took about three, four pictures, put him back in the water, released the fish after he measured him and everything. And three days later, Kyle saw his fish uh, pretty much at the same spot where he caught him. And so That's I tell you, this, this young man, he spends so much time fishing on this <laughs> lake. His mother and dad tell him, you know, you can't fish until you get your homework done. And so uh, he does his homework during study hall, at lunchtime, and, of course, on the bus coming home. Just so when he gets home, he's still got maybe an hour or two hours of daylight where he can get out and fish. He fishes almost every day. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> hey, Jim, give us the All information. Right. What's the .com? Where do we find information there for Mystic Moose? Well, Mystic, mysticmooseresort.com uh, or just mysticmoose.com uh, will get you to our website up here. And, of course, uh, haywardlakes.com uh, is the website, of course, for the Hayward area, which is a huge website. And it will give you all kinds of different information and things that are going on in this area uh, year-round. Jim Ownerheim and Kevin Bushnick, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Delta Diner Music. <laughs> Welcome back to Distilleries of the World. I'm Michael Seward, America's number one wino. Joined in my right by <laughs> yeah. our uh, brewery expert, Timothy Bona, and, of course, the uh, Distillery Channel uh, guru, uh, Randy Weckerly. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. <laughs> guru. Huh? I love yeah. it. You like uh. that? And we are on the shores of Lake Geneva. Yeah. This is our Wisconsin show. Yeah. Yeah, we're known as the dairy land, but you know we're pretty modest about our lakes. Minnesota's ten thousand lakes, right? Right. right. The DNR in this state says we have over seventeen thousand lakes. But who's counting in Minnesota? Not <laughs> a... yeah. We they should send him a note. Count. There you go. You know, send him a note. And how do you spell guru? Mm-hmm. How's yeah. that? I don't know. I don't know either. But you notice I'm wearing my uh, Wisconsin fatigues. I, I can hardly see yeah. you sitting there. Well, oh, it's the, it's the cheese state. Yeah, it's the Badger <laughs> state, the cheese state, and you know what? They probably have more uh, deer hunting There's than some any rats other about uh, as well. Yeah, than any other state in uh, in the union. So, uh, but we're heading to the Northwoods. Take us there, Randy. We are, and I understand why they would be where they're at to avoid people you like see us. See their slogan before you bring her in. Bring yeah, her in. Uh, the diner that does doesn't have wheels, but. That don't mean it ain't going places. <laughs> <laughs> and if you listen to the commercials, they will tell you they've served dozens. Right. Dozens. Well, take us to our celebrity chef. Mary. <laughs> Mary, do me a favor. Pronounce your last name one more time. It is Heikla. Heikla. Uh, Mary is a guru of yes. the Delta Diner. She is... Been part of the Delta Where dozens Diner. have been served. Dozens have been served, right. one at a time. And she is, uh, the, the interesting thing about the Delta Diner is out in the middle of nowhere, not hard to get to, but you have to go on a drive. Tell us about that, Mary, and a little bit about the Delta Diner. It's just a great place. Well, the Delta Diner is an original 1940s uh, Silk City Diner. Um, originally in New York is where it was found and purchased, and it had what they call a frame-up restoration done in Cleveland, Ohio. And it brought out in the back of a flatbed truck um, from there to Delta, Wisconsin, which is right in the middle of the beautiful Schwamigan National Forest. Yeah, the cool thing, Mary, uh, is that they you have no menus. You serve burgers on, on Monday only. And uh, so when people go in there, get, tell tell Michael and, uh, our, and Tim. How can how, you not have a menu? <laughs> how that works. Well, Michael and Tim, um, when you walk in through the door, the main thing what we do is uh, our product is the experience. So you walk through the door, 
hopefully get greeted by a friendly staff, a cool atmosphere, some fun music playing. And from then on, you just kind of become part of the diner. Um, you're not just there by yourself. Um, it's a very social aspect that happens. And you get seated, and um, your server will come to you and then kind of talk to you about the menu, talk to you about the food. And even though there's some up on the board, like a traditional diner style, um, it's generally described to you each menu item and then our booth like specials. Yeah. Uh, what I appreciate about it, the burgers, I see your steak is ground less than an hour before you open the door on Monday morning. How sweet is that? That is correct. Yeah, we get some really awesome meat product from 6th Street Market in Ashland, and the meat is seasoned and ground fresh every Monday morning, as well as our buns are baked fresh Mondays as well. And so by the time people walk in the door at about 11 o'clock, it's just getting done and ready to go, and it's so um, fluffy. Delicious. Yeah, but this is the distillery show, but we're going to have to get a malt to chase that burger, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, my goodness. With whipped cream and a cherry on top. Old classic. One of the things the Delta Diner does, they believe in uh, having people make a living wage. Uh-huh. So they have a whole different way. There's no tipping policy, correct, Mary? Yeah, that's correct. Um, kind of a new thing for us, but June 1st of last year, we actually completely removed tipping from our business model. Um, what we did is we increased prices on all of our food and beverage, um, which allows us to pay everyone a year-round living wage. Um, we now hire adults starting at a base wage of $15 an hour. Um, students are at 10 and we have some staff that are on core salary. Um, this allowed us to do our first paid internship program this summer through UW South. And we can now do revenue sharing and bonuses. And it's just a really cool compensation model, which really fits our business and who we are as far as the team environment. One of the, one of the cool things about where you're at, even though you're out, how far away from anywhere are you, the edge of the earth? <laughs> I mean, you're, you're in the middle. the middle. We say we're right in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I agree, because we had to drive an hour to get there. And we didn't know where we started from. Drive, wasn't it? it was wonderful. Had no idea. Bob, and you, of course, you met Bob. His mom knew where it was. She has left the earthly confines. He sort of knew where it was, and mm-hmm. and we found it. And it is a very small quaint. And the thing about it is, you have a few lines there in the morning, don't you? When people, uh... yeah, we we do. It's uh, pretty fun. We, you know, you said we serve dozens and dozens one person at a time, but actually, it's more like thirty-five people at a time. Um, <laughs> Often we'll be opening the door at about 8 o'clock, and there's a line of people waiting to come in. And it stays like that from start to close, yeah. um, often with an hour wait out the door at times. That eclectic menu. I'm looking at jalapeno pancakes. I lo- I lo- and- jalapeno pa- I was going to say, Mary uh, Mary Heichel uh, joins us uh, with the Delta Diner in uh, the north woods of Delta, Wisconsin. All right. Uh, what's your signature? What would you call a signature dish, or do you have one or two of those? You know, I hate to say this, but everything on our menu is kind of a signature dish to us. Um, People come there specifically for all different kinds of items based on their personal preference. But the jalapeno pancakes are for sure something very unique to what we do, Um, as well as any of our blue plate specials, such as our, like, Cajun red beans and sausage served over rice. Um, We also do a really nice red-eye biscuits and gravy, which is kind of a southern tradition. Right. Um, But a lot of our menu is very eclectic and fun, and we like to mess around with flavors and our kind of challenge the customer that comes in do you bring in a lot of the uh, local flair like uh we've got about 10 seconds yeah. left in this so yeah. okay it, yeah it's gonna mary we're gonna have to bring you back and continue this this is this has been spectacular and uh mary heikla of the delta diner thanks, thanks mary much. yeah i appreciate everything you did mary it's wonderful food can't wait to get back that's my pleasure thanks All right, well, that can only mean one thing. We're heading to our brewery of the week, our featured destination there. And uh, we're heading to the Deep Water Grill in Ashland, Wisconsin. And joining us is uh, Mark Gutterter, the owner of the uh, Deep Water Grill. Uh, Mark, welcome to uh, Distilleries of the World. Thank you. It's great to be here. Hey, it's great to have you. All right, Ashland, Wisconsin, uh, give us a little history about the uh, Deep Water Grill. Well, we opened the brewery in 1995, South Shore Brewery, 
And uh, we uh, we were originally located in a, in a beautiful train depot in downtown Ashland. Uh, April 1st of 2000, right on the uh, April Fool's joke, uh, in the millennial year, uh, a fire caught uh, started in the kitchen, and uh, it burned all day long, and uh, we were out of business for about 14 months. We relocated to the Deepwater Grill location uh, the following May. And how did you get started in this business? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I've been uh, in the restaurant business ever since I could wash dishes back in high school. Um uh, been self-employed since 1991, and uh, in 1994, I was operating a um, oh a, a supper club in a historic depot building. Uh, not enough traffic to support the overhead of the building, and uh, I went to the bank at that time. I had a brother on the uh, east coast and a sister on the west coast, and these little breweries were starting to pop up, uh, you know, in Colorado and. Portland, Seattle, Boston, and uh, so I went to my banker and I said, you know, I'd really like to operate a, a little brewery here that might help the restaurant business along. And the banker kind of looked at me and said, let me get this straight. Yeah. Uh, you don't have enough customers for your supper club, and you want to open another restaurant in the same building. And I said, yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of <laughs> what I want to do. Yeah. And uh, and so he, he, after he understood what we were going to do and, and what we planned on doing, he said, okay. And we were able to borrow about $200,000. We bought a very small brewery, uh, it set that up within uh, the restaurant operation, put in a casual uh, brew pub themed uh, restaurant along with the fine dining. And uh, we've been going after that whole thing for about 21 years now. Yeah, and the thing, the feeling I had, we had dinner up there a couple of weeks ago when I came into the restaurant. The historical aspects of sitting there and looking at Lake Superior and and thinking about the sailors and the different, uh, you know, different the historical. I mean, Lake Superior has been unfriendly to some people that have sailed on it. Of course, everybody knows the Edmund Fitzgerald. But do you ever get a, any of the the people that work on the ships to come in there and and share their stories of what they had to go through to survive? You know, any of the torment of Lake Superior as years went on. You know, in the 1890s, this is uh, well over 100 years ago, 120 years ago, Ashland, Wisconsin, was the largest port uh, on the on the Great on the on Lake Superior. Uh, we had more departure arrivals and departures than uh, Duluth Superior, uh, and of course, we didn't hold that for very long. But uh, Ashland was a, a town of 20,000, uh, well over 100 years ago, and, and and now we're about 8,500. A lot of history up here in Ashland. Well, it was just rich, and you, you could just feel it as you walked in. I mean, just in that bar that you have. Uh, tell us about that, where that came from. I mean, I, I heard some stories that that was brought from the Deep South. Is that correct? That, that's absolutely correct. After the depot fire uh, in, nine, in 2000, uh, we, um, we, we found the three-story building now that we're in, the brownstone and brick building, and it was an auto parts store, and basically there was beautiful hardwood floors and a and a nice historical facade to the building, and that was about it. I mean, there was a suspended ceiling in there, and anyways, at the time, we were, uh, you know, looking to start up a restaurant and get the brewery o- opened again, and and so we went down to Atlanta, Georgia, and we we uh, we found a, just a wonderful bar uh, and actually ended up buying two bars down there, but the, the, the main bar uh, was a four-sided bar with a nice canopy, a lot of stained glass, and... Uh, it fit nicely into the room that we had, and and, uh, and so a lot of people just love to just come and see it. Hey, Mark, it's Tim. Can we talk uh, barley and hops now, please? You've got your Appleton Fest have, uh, ale coming out in a couple of weeks here, early uh, October, but uh, you just went through a three-year collaborative effort with the Midwest Hops and Barley Co-op Brewers and Growers up there. You've got some great-tasting ales coming out. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, you know, the brewers do a fantastic job. They've uh, they've put a cooperative together and have local farmers raising the raising the uh, barley, uh, local growers raising hops. Our Wisconsin Pale Ale uh, it uses 100% uh, Wisconsin grown hops. Uh, the Apple Fest Ale is uh, infused with cider from the Bayfield area, uh, and the, and the uh, 
the people growing the barley. We take that uh, barley after it's harvest and ship it up to uh, a maltster actually in Canada, and they're the only maltster that will uh, will keep only our product together in one batch, and they malt it and then uh, store it, and then as we need it, it's shipped back to us. And, and so uh, it's a great collaborative effort with the local growers in the area. And we're visiting with uh, Mark Gutterer, yeah, and uh – the, the, the destination for people to get way up, there's not too much further north that they can get, but the Deepwater Grill in Ashland, Wisconsin. Tell us what your uh, websites are and how do we get a, get some information. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Deepwatergrill.com uh, 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 is going to you know, get you to the restaurant. Uh, we're located in downtown Ashland. Uh, we're the only brewery up, uh, up north here in, in uh, northern Wisconsin. So, um, you know, when, when you come up north, uh, and you can't remember the name or you're you, you not sure where to go, ask any of the local people and say, hey, I'm looking for the brewery, and, and they will direct you. <laughs> we'll be there, Mark. Direct. Thanks a lot. I'll be there yeah. in a couple of weeks. Can't yeah. wait to get back. <laughs> All right. I next, appreciate it. That sounds great. Next up, we're heading to the tasting room on the Distillery Channel Radio. Hello, and greetings from the Delta Diner. You know, some restaurants like to brag about how many McPeople they've McServed. And at the Delta Diner, I guess we're not above that either. Since we faithfully rebuilt our original 1940 Silk City Diner a few years back, we've served dozens, dozens of dozens. And not to brag, but we would have served even more if not for the fact that we're out here an hour away from most folks. But then our customers consider the drive and the long wait once they get here well worth it, which tells you more about our food than any adjectives I could come up with. Plus, how much quality family time can you get at those dime a dozen places where the longest part of your drive is from the order speaker to the pickup window? And don't miss Burger Mondays, the only day we serve burgers. You can find out more about our weekly burger options by visiting our Facebook page, if that's your kind of thing. The Delta Diner on County H and Delta, in the middle of nowhere and like nowhere you've ever been. Welcome back to Distilleries of the World. Tim Bonus sitting in with uh, Michael Stewart. What's your uh, what's your moniker, moniker, moniker for this show again? America's number one wino. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I got a wino on my port side, and on my starboard side we have Randy, Randy Weckerly of the Distillery Channel. And uh, how do you earn a living, living again? I'm looking. You're still looking. looking. You're I've looking. got a great resume. Yeah. And this is yeah. our uh, <laughs> tasting room segment. But uh, I could find it. It's a Wisconsin show, and we've, we're almost. You know, we haven't talked about the most storied franchise in National Football League history. What would that be? Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers. That's right. You know, you yeah. can get tickets for that. <laughs> Where? Somebody's I'm, got. Somebody's got to die up the tree. Right, a somebody's got to die. Right, no, yeah. right in my notes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the other team, when they don't fulfill at the end of the week, they put them on stub hub. Oh, and I they, didn't know that. Yeah, and uh, if they don't fulfill them, you can actually go on there. Or if you have a group, they'll work with groups. And 20 years from now, you can have that group show up <laughs> and get you in. I was going to say 20 yeah. years. Yeah, no, we, there'll be enough people die. All right, well, let me tell us about our tasting room. is uh, brought to you by Nancy Lopez Golf Adventures. 
uh, taking the and they're taking the Distilleries of the World show to Lake Tahoe, California, June 2017. For more information, log on to the distillerychannel.com. All right, uh, here we go. We're talking. Uh, our talking wine, mead. Now. Our winery of the week is yes. uh, where? The uh, White Winter Winery. I've got it right here. Up north, yay. Yeah, hey. Up in uh, near Iron River, Bayfield County, up uh, near, uh, you know, just the unique environment of Lake Superior. All these fruits right. up there. Oh, Ra- my goodness. Raise your glass. We have some uh, this is apple mead. honey wine. This is mead honey yes. wine, right? This is mead honey wine. For by, those of uh, you, uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. For those of you are on the mead page. Uh, Iron River, Wisconsin. Actually. Mead predates yeah. beer and winemaking. It's 8,000 years old. They should have their recipe down by now. <laughs> <laughs> that should it's be perfect. The nectar of gods, oh. they say. I'll yeah. be the judge of that. Or the yeah. drink of celebration. So there's lots of honey in these ones. Oh, you can taste the honey mm. right away. Yeah. Uh, well. But uh, just like traditional grape wines, there are many styles and types of mead. Some are very dry, robust. Well, this sweet, refreshing. What do you got there? This is made with a uh, style of mead made with fresh pressed apple cider from Bayfield, Wisconsin, and pure Wisconsin honey. Again, this, Boy, is this stuff is really good. You, you know what I just noticed? Yeah. There's way too much man love on this. <laughs> we should not. We have to get some female uh, to come in and, and uh, uh, we will and help a little we bit will. of this. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's just a, this is too much romance. <laughs> we're, we're not that far up yeah. north. So, uh, <laughs> okay, I'll leave that. I'll let that oh, go. Yeah. It's, it's cold. <laughs> yeah, it's cold down here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're on the shores of Lake Geneva. That's all you yeah. want to know. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, anyway. the, anyways, these are uh, this is award-winning uh, meads up there at the White yeah, River. This is winery. wine uh, white. Winter Winery. Just 30 minutes east of Duluth, Minnesota. But this is our Wisconsin show. And we're, uh, we're tasting the apple honey wine right now. And it's uh, it's absolutely delicious. It's spectacular. So you want to go to, uh, yeah, you want to go. The website is whitewinter.com. That's whitewinter.com. All right. Why don't we, uh, let, me do, uh, let me do our vacation of the Please week. Please do. Yeah. yeah, and then we can get to some more uh, news and trivia. Uh, Distillery, wineries, and breweries of the world is heading to Maui and Kauai, Hawaii, nice. in February with Golf Hall of Famer Nancy Lopez. For more information, you want to go to the distillerychannel.com. Get a hold of uh, Randy Weckerly at the mm-hmm. Distillery Channel. Dot com. All right, Timmy. All right, I'm going to name the city. You name, tell me in Wisconsin. Tell me yeah. what they're famous for. This, I'll okay. start you easy. Eagle River. All right, Eagle River. Yes. Uh, what are they famous for up there? They're for uh, eagles. Snowmobile capital of the world. Oh, okay. Green Bay. <laughs> this is a tough one. Packers. No, it's a toilet paper capital of the world. <laughs> yeah. And 13 time world champion Green Bay Packers. Monroe. You mentioned this earlier. Monroe, Wisconsin. Uh, Jeez, it. Yeah, they're Swiss, Swiss, Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese. Yeah. Is that okay? All right. All right. Mount Horrible. Mount, Hor- Mount Horrible. Mount yeah. Horrible. Oh, okay. yeah. The troll- mustard. Mustard. No. Trolls. Trolls. Yeah, but they have the yeah. mustard oh, museum. Oh, is that what the mustard museum mustard is? Museum. It is. is there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Sheboygan. Sheboygan. Uh, sausage. Bratwurst. Right? Bratwurst. And yeah. Sturgeon Bay up there. On the, Sturgeon uh, Bay is... Uh, shipbuilding. Uh, yeah, shipbuilding capital. Of the world. Yeah, furthermore, did yes. you know? Did I know? Yeah. Did you know? Wisconsin repealed its laws... Uh, enforcing prohibition in 1929, four years before the nation as a whole. <laughs> we are here. It's cold. You're not going to come do anything anyway. We're this doing is my it. surprised face. Yeah. <laughs> Wisconsin has what? More bars per capita than any other uh-huh. state in the union, right? Oh, wait. And then there's more. Oh, there's more? The okay. Wisconsin State Cow Chip Throw Festival is oh, held Lord. in Sauk City, and Prairie du Sac is the world's largest Celebration for the Vine Fecal Matter, as they advertise. Oh, <laughs> All right, let's do some largest <laughs> cow chip throwing. And you wonder why I'm looking for a job. Uh, no. Famous Wisconsinites. Right. I'm changing. Oh, Wisconsin. Fine. I'll get back to you, my Fine. Uh, Harry Houdini. Harry Houdini. Yeah. Yes. Liberace. He disappeared, though. The Fonz. <laughs> The Fonz. The Fonz actually has a statue down in uh, yeah. downtown uh, Milwaukee, right? Chris Farley and Orson Welles. All Wisconsin. Chris Farley and Orson yeah. Welles. What do you got there? Oh, I, have, uh, I have some uh, worldwide stuff. Good. You want some worldwide stuff? Yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of wine, uh, mm-hmm. wine lovers drop $8.4 million on one guy's wine collection. What? 
Oklahoma oil and gas magnate uh, Aubrey McClendon hauled in $8.4 million at a Chicago auction just this last weekend. Uh, he's the CEO of America. He was. He died. <laughs> the CEO of American Energy Partners, and uh, he was also uh, owner of the uh, uh, Oklahoma City uh, basketball team, you know, Thunder, uh, NBA basketball team. Uh, he died uh, a few months ago, and his collection, 4,600-plus bottles of wine, the highest one, the 8.4 million dollars. Uh, let's see. They had 1,000 bidders from all over the world. The priciest lot was a case of three double magnums of 1989 Chateau Petrus, sold for $65,000. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Three magnums. Whoa. $65,000. Whoa. Go. All right. You like that? I like that. All right. You want, you want something else? I do. Okay. Jerusalem Microbrewery produces biblical era brew. Of course they do. Yes, what happened is uh, vineyards have long flourished in Israel's Galilee region since biblical times, although wine may have been staple alcoholic beverage for the ancient Israelites. Grain beer was also produced and widely consumed in ancient times. Now, a young microbrewery in Jerusalem recently produced what they may be the closest match to biblical brew, using heritage grain related to a strain 2,000 years old wheat that was resurrected and genetically modified by an Israeli startup brewery. Hmm. So, Interesting. 2,000-year-old brew. Hmm. What do you got there, Randy? Before I have, I have a short, uh, Amy Newman, who's 110 years old, uh, has described, uh, she said, you want to learn how to live to 110? She swore by drinking three Miller High Lifes and a shot of whiskey <laughs> a day. <laughs> she did it for many years until some spoil sport yeah. caregivers <laughs> Put the kibosh on, on her imbibing. Miller High Life? Yeah, she and died She died three days it. later. <laughs> I think they stopped to cut her off. It is a champagne of beer. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, we, before we go, I want to thank our guests, uh, Mary Haikia, yeah. uh, DeltaDiner.com, and uh, we've got the, uh, we want a Deep Water Grill, okay, dot com, uh, Kevin Bushnell uh, with Mystic Moose. Dot com. So mm-hmm. we've got all those people, and we want to thank them all for yeah. coming on. We're and upcoming the, shows, what do you got? we're going to be going to Minnesota. Minnesota. Next week. Next week. Well, we're leaving the dirty yeah. Yeah. So Tim, Ryder Cup. For Randy, for Michael, I'm Tim. Uh, Tim, we're going to go out with a final toast from our good friends up at the uh, White Winter Winery up on the Iron River up North Bay. Uh, they like to remind us that uh, you know we can share what we learn as we connect with friends and family as we partake. Yes. Laugh. And have fun, authentic in every way. They encourage us to do. So go ahead, drink deep, live wise, be real, live with balance, connect with those you love in an age old tradition of celebration throughout the year. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Hey, everybody out there, drink responsibly. Wanted to have you come back next week. Go, Bucky, go. There you go. On Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs>